Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! All right, everyone, today we're going to work on this FA unit. Well, we've got the B unit running. It's still not speed matched or anything, but we've got it running and it seems to run really well. We broke it in. Actually, I'm pretty sure my B unit wasn't new, nor is this A unit, but it does have one light. That's its, its headlamp here. I don't know if it's supposed to be a Mars light or anything like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and wire it as a straight headlight and then that's what we'll do. I guess these are the two most common forms of LEDs that you can have. You can have ones that are bare at 3.3 volts. You can get them at other volts, uh, voltage levels and the ones that are pre-wired. And these ones come with a resistor already built into it. LEDs are usually polarized. So in order to use them, if you're gonna, especially if you're gonna use a bare one, you're gonna have to determine which side is the positive and which side is the negative. Standard convention is do you have the lead to the negative be shorter and the negative side will also have a flat spot on it. Um, and if you look from the top, um, it's easy to identify. If you have problems visually locating the flat spot, you can just run your finger up and down. And that's, that's actually what I usually do. After that, you just need to put your 7500 ohm or whatever resistor you use in between that and the 12 volt positive uh, power source. Most resistors and pretty much all the ones that you're going to use are not polarized, so you can pick which way you want to stick it in. It doesn't matter which way. You if you're going to orient this the same way I did in the last video on this one, your front is the one with the microchip on it, and I put that to the right side. I'll label the correct um, 12 volt positive and uh, the negative uh, terminals for you. And in this particular case, it's the 12 volt that's the common and the negatives handle uh, anytime you want to turn any of these on or off. So that being said, if you want to use the pre-wired version, then just do this. Just put the um, red, hook the red wire onto the bottom middle post and you hook the black one onto the top middle post. If you're gonna use the bare LED, um, align it so that the short end or the flat side is up and the longer end or the positive is down and just put your resistor in between the voltage positive and the long end and then just wire in the shorter end. Okay, after filming the video for the other one, I went ahead and um, wired up the A unit. You can see here it's exactly the same as the other one and um, we're going to go ahead and put lights on this one. What we'll do is I'm going to use the pre-wired one because I'm lazy like that and since the resistor is actually up towards the bulb you can pretty much cut the wire to any length you want as long as you don't make it about two millimeters or something and cut into that resistor so I'll just do a really brief measurement here okay fair enough that's where I'll cut after I soldered into this this is what I've got so the bulb is sitting there quite nicely it's sitting in this uh, little cup here I guess it's designed to hold it and now I'll just go ahead and put some silicon tubing over it so that the light doesn't spread everywhere we'll just go ahead and plop that shell on top of it it'll go right in and if you notice the speaker baffle isn't glued in that's because I don't care because um, it's not interfering with the drive shaft and there you go you can see the LED through the um, light lens really easily and that's what we want it'll look best doing that this decoder is still set for default of three so that's what we'll use if you want the light works just perfect Looks really good. Now, if you want to turn down the brightness, you can do that through CV settings. I will show you those in the CV lesson, which will be the next one. If you notice, if I reverse the direction and make it go in reverse, the light turns off, which is generally how it should work, I guess, because there's no reason to have headlight on when you're not going forward. You can actually change that through CV values, but I'm gonna leave that default. Sounds like the speaker's clipping a little bit. The other one didn't do that, but that's okay. I'll just turn down the volume some and I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson also. 
One thing that's nifty about this model is that the number boards are actually translucent. And I'll turn it around here. I don't know if I can do such a great job, but if you look closely, you can see the light shining through the opposite way here. It's shining into the shell. Let's see if I can get that better. I don't know. Does that look better? I think you can see it. I think you can see the two number boards shining through. And we are going to take advantage of that by putting two lights, one behind each number board so that we can light those up on demand with F24, actually. I think that'll look pretty good. What I'm gonna use for these number boards is what's known as an SMD, a surface mount device, or it's a surface mount diode since that's what it is. And if you look here, it's tiny, it's tiny. This isn't even the smallest one you can get, but you can actually get ones that are larger from the, oh, I can't get, I get in there. There you go, tiny, tiny, tiny thing. This is actually designed to be soldered directly onto a uh, circuit board. They plop it down on there and it has flux and solder and they heat it up and it automatically solders itself on. But when they do this, I don't know if somebody does it by hand, I hope not, but our machine solders these wires on. So that's what you're seeing here. Unless you're a much better solderer than I am, I suggest you get these pre-wired. And you know, I've been soldering since I was like 16 or something like that. And I still would not want to do one of these on my own. And you see, it's going to fit in here really nicely. It's going to fit right behind that number board. So I'll need two of them for this application. So there you have it. It fits snug right in there, no problem. Um, and so it'll be pretty cool. Just like with the other LED I use, these ones I also purchased pre-wired, but the problem is, is the resistor is not up by the bulb. It's actually way, way down here at the end of the wire. Um, so you're more than welcome to strip off, you know, the, um, the shrink wrap and then try to rewire, but I'm, I'm not going to bugger with that. The other thing is you want to be really careful not to pull on these wires or anything like that because these are just soldered in. There's, I, there may be some glue, but I doubt it. I'm pretty sure they're just held on by solder and it's really easy to rip these wires out and good luck once you do that. One thing I like to do with SMD LEDs is I like to cover them with glue and the two glues I use for that are either white glue like I'm doing here or I use Gorilla Glue. One of the reasons I like to do that is because again these are really fragile and putting glue on there allows them to hold quite a bit better. But on top of that those contacts are actually exposed on the back of this SMD LED and if you accidentally short them you'll blow the whole thing out. Well you could you could blow them out I should say or but if you short them it just may not work at all so that I almost always put glue and part of the reason that I'm using white glue is because I want these to be kind of translucent and that way they'll kind of spread across the number board a lot easier. All right we'll do the same thing with the second one here. This, let's get it in. Yep, no problem. It looks a little bit messy but don't worry when it dries everything will be fine I promise. Okay so here's what we're going to have in the end. We are going to use the other size VCC positive. I just I just think it'll be easier since these leads are so long. And then for the negative, I'm going to use F3 here. So I'm going to solder the two negative leads into F3. So and remember, I had to do it for each side. So there'll be two of these. And here's what it looks like in the end. Sorry, I just tack these down with dries tack real quick to make sure the wires wouldn't get tangled up in the edge of the shell. But you can see the two resistors that are going to go to the two SMD LEDs. They're both soldered into this common positive. And when we move to the front of the decoder, you'll see that the two negative leads from the two SMD LEDs are soldered into F3. Sorry about that. I guess the wire covered up F3. But if you look, it's in the same spot that's on the diagram I just showed you. And if we go around to the front, I try to put everything on the chassis if possible. I just think it's a lot easier to deal with on the chassis. I simply glued these into place where the number boards were, and then I put tape over the top of them. And that way, when the shell goes down over them, it won't grab onto the SMDs directly. And hopefully because of that, they'll stay in place a lot better. So you don't have to do this step, do that part how you want, but I think the tape will help when reassembling the shell. And I put a little bit of dry tack onto the front headlight because it, it seemed to want to walk around a little bit. So that's it. That should get us into the ballpark. By default, F3 is mapped into function 24. So there's the headlight, still works just fine. And then if I hit F24, you should see the number board lights come on. There they go. Looks really good. SMDs are pretty bright, especially for being so small. But yeah, I think once again, just putting a little bit of the white glue over the top of them will diffuse that light just a little bit, which is what we need for the number boards. 
when I plunk the shell over it and we go through this same thing, you will see that uh, once again, the headlight lights up no problem and the number boards will light up once again with F24. <laughs> there we go. Looks pretty good, I think. So you can turn them on independently of the headlight, which I thought would be, I mean, if you wanted to, you could wire these directly into the headlight and it would light them up, but I didn't think most people would want that. All right, there you have it. I hope this helped. And um, if it did, please let me know in the comments, hit like. If you have any questions, you know, you can also leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribed. And until next time, continued happy model railroading. And I'll see you later. Take care.